Okay, let me do this question. It says a uh, bank highway. Oh, all right. <laughs> so it says it's banked. So that must mean if we are looking at the imagine looking at the like a back of the car, um, and looking at like a cross section of the road, it must have a view that looks like this. So it. So some sort of a banked highway. It says it's designed for the traffic moving at some speed, the radius of the curve. Okay, let me draw a top view so that I have some idea of how this information fit in. So it's a curved road that we are dealing with. And there's a car over here that's uh, moving at some speed. That's, uh, let me label that V0, the speed that they are given, giving here. That's the design speed of the road. Um, oh, and it's giving me in kilometers per hour. <laughs> Normally, I would have liked to do that in Sage Math. You know, let me do a combination of Sage Math and Oframe Alpha. That way, I do as little manual work as possible. And they are giving us the radius of curvature of this road uh, as 318 meters. OK. And what is the angle of the banking of the highway? OK. Oh, yeah. So this is what they're asking. And uh, in the rear view, let me draw the car. Uh, the car is going to look something like this. Uh, and it's a speed V0 will be pointed into the screen the way I've drawn it. OK, and um, so with these two views in mind, you should think through which view would allow you to draw the forces in the most uh, informative way. And I hope you have enough intuition to see it's the rear view that you should draw the forces to especially relate to the angle that you are most interested in. In the top view, a lot of that information will be kind of hidden from the perspective of your vectors. So, so as I go through the standard strategy, uh, I'm going to be using the rear view. So let me first spell out the standard strategy so that um, I don't forget the steps. And, you know, when you are going through this, you don't have to write them out the way I'm doing it. But I do want you to go through these steps in your head. You know, step number one, draw a free body diagram. Step number two, define coordinate axis. Step number three, um, break forces into components. And finally, step number four, again, this is the step people want to jump to, but you should go through steps one through three so that you will be ready to write down Newton's second law equation. Acceleration is given by net force divided by mass of the object that you are drawing free body diagram for. So let me start out with the free body diagram. Um, so I'm going to be using the rear view. So um, looking at this dot, looking at this rear view, um, there's always going to be gravity, so let me draw gravity, pulling it down, straight down, mg. And I know it's not accelerating downward. In fact, um, should it be accelerating at all? I think uh, there will be temptation for people to say, oh, this shouldn't accelerate at all. Acceleration is equal to zero. And if that's what you're thinking, as you are drawing the next force, you will run into a little bit of trouble. So you do know that it okay it shouldn't be accelerating downward. So I look at what things are touching the car. I see this roadway is touching the car. So there should be two types of forces from the point of contact. Normal force and potentially a friction force. So let me draw the normal force first. The normal force goes perpendicular to the direction of the road. So you know, that's the direction of the road. This is theta. So there should be normal force going that way. And that's uh, leading you to a little bit of uh, a problem. It doesn't matter how uh, large this end, like the size of the end doesn't matter. You can balance out the gravity, but you will have unbalanced horizontal component of the normal force. So um, sounds problematic. And uh, if your intuition is telling you, oh, then the uh, maybe there's going to be a friction force. And I guess I don't have a good way to say no. Um, <laughs> other than to say, so at some point, you know, uh, I guess sometimes mistakes compound. So at some point, there's no getting around the fact that you should correctly realize that when a car is undergoing a circular motion, it's making a trip that can be described with a uh, non-infinite radius of curvature it's going to be accelerating. It's going to be undergoing centripetal acceleration. 
So this car here, it's not undergoing zero acceleration. It is undergoing acceleration in the horizontal direction equal to AC. And I do want to really carefully specify that this is uh, uh, accelerating in the horizontal direction, not along the direction of the slope, incline. Because if it's along the direction of incline, that would imply the center of the circle is some surface below the ground, and I don't think that's what they mean. The center of the circle is uh, on the same level as the surface. So, um, so that distinction matters because that's the direction of acceleration and that will guide uh, in what direction we are going to uh, define our coordinate axis for the next step. But before we get there, let's just convince ourselves that we've drawn all the forces that we need to draw. Because uh, I think you should go through the consideration of um, this question. What about friction? Should there be friction force and should it be upward? Should it be downward? Which direction? <laughs> and uh, um, this is where careful reading of the qu question text is helpful. The question text, text says, the highway is designed for traffic moving at this speed. And what designed for is trying to hint at is for the traffic that's moving at this ideal speed, the friction force should not be necessary. Uh, for example, if the road is really slippery for the cars moving at that ideal speed, it should it still shouldn't slide sideways. So, so that's what we're gonna do, and it goes with uh, what we said earlier about the static friction force being uh, there being no no uh, formula for static friction force. For here, I would say the wording of the question uh, makes me makes me think that the static friction force is meant to be zero in this setup. It doesn't mean there's no co coefficient of friction between the tire and the road, that'd be terrible. But it's saying whatever the coefficient is, um, for this ideal speed, you shouldn't need the friction force. So with that, uh, let me move to the next step in the standard strategy. We need to define coordinate axis. And here, the axis that you will draw is counterintuitive. Because in order to define my positive x direction along the direction of acceleration, what that means is my positive x axis should be in this direction. Yeah, uh, you know, shouldn't uh, it's the along the direction of acceleration. A lot of people are used to setting the axis along the incline and that way, and many questions that makes sense because that's the direction of acceleration. For this question, this is the direction of acceleration, so this direction makes sense. Um, <laughs> it, uh, no more, uh, it's no more complicated or simple than that. So having defined my axis, now I can break forces into components. Gravity, don't need to break it down. It's beautifully already in the y direction. It's my normal force this time that has to be broken down. So I need to draw my x component of the normal force and the y component of normal force. And let me try to identify the angles. So this is my theta. So this is also theta. So this is 90 degrees minus theta, which means this must be theta. So with that angle theta, I can now identify these uh, sides of these legs using you know trigonometry. So and ka, you know, sine is going to be associated with the opposite side. Cosine will be associated with the adjacent side. This is the opposite side, so it should be the hypotenuse, normal force, times the sine of the theta. And this should be um, hypotenuse, normal force, times cosine of the theta. So with all those, I have all the information necessary to simply write down the, the um, Newton's second law equation. And uh, I need to write down two equations, one for each direction, x and y. So x direction, my acceleration, centripetal acceleration, is going to be equal to the x component of the forces. I guess there's only one, this one, uh, n sine theta. And because I defined my positive x direction in the same direction as acceleration, there are no extraneous negative signs. That divided by mass of the car, which we don't have, but I'm hoping it'll cancel out. And uh, in the y direction, I have uh, no acceleration. That's the purpose of defining the axis the way we do. And uh, I have the y component of the normal force and cosine theta minus mg 
divided by mass of the thing that it is we are drawing free body diagram for that should give us the acceleration which should be zero and we can imagine multiplying this through by m in order to simplify the equation and before i go any further i should count my equations and unknowns and make sure i have the right number of them <laughs> um, let's say i have two equations one and two and i have one unknown normal first unknown two the question is asking for data, so data must be unknown. So two equations, three unknowns, all right. Um, it's not solvable yet. I need to write, find the additional equations that I can write down. And here, the I have a piece of information that I haven't used. So that should guide your thinking on, hmm, what equation should I have written down? And you have the speed of the cars moving. And um, you know that this is a centripetal acceleration. So you know that there's a formula from chapter 4 that relates that acceleration to the speed. Uh, v naught squared over r. And we are given the radius of curvature. So this uh, must be our third equation that will allow us to solve for three unknowns um, using the three equations. So let me use the sage math to work through the algebra. And I'm seeing this uh, non-SI basic unit. So I'll get the algebraic expression from the, the sage math and then do the rest in Wolfram Alpha. Um, or, or you can also do just unit conversion in Wolfram Alpha. That's fine too. Well, I'm just choosing to do it one way. Okay, let me uh, first declare all the variables I'm gonna use. It will be AC, normal force, theta, M, um, is there a G? Hey, there's no G. Oh, no, there is G. Yeah, there's G. Um, and V naught, and, uh, wait, not capital, and the uh, R. I think that's all the symbols. Again, if I forgot something, Sage Math will complain. So A, C is equal to N times the sine theta divided by M. Um, equation 2 is 0 is equal to uh, n times cosine theta minus m times g divided by mass. Or uh, let me write down the sim. Uh, uh, let me leave it here. I think it's going to be fine. Equation 3 is equal to uh, centripetal acceleration is equal to v naught squared divided by r. And let me print those equations to make sure I didn't make any typos. Equation 1. 2 and 3. Okay, let me use the solve function. If you are not sure how to, the syntax of the function, use the internal documentation that you can access with the help. Um, and uh, the three unknowns are the acceleration, normal force, and theta. And uh, let me put theta first so that it'll be the first element it'll give me. And I'm gonna put this into a variable um uh, there's well let's see how well it does sage method tends not to deal well with the uh, trick functions um, <laughs> we'll see how well it does if it's having issues um then i'll i'll, I'll do some workarounds sage method is uh, really great for solving a uh, linear system of equations uh, that are algebraic <laughs> uh, it doesn't do inverse trick functions well uh, so yeah, so it didn't, it didn't solve anything, I think. Um, yeah. Oh, how do I want to do it? Um, I think the way to do it is to turn this into a system of four equations. <laughs> to give you some details of that, uh, um, of that uh, trick uh, structure. So I'll tell you, tell it, okay, so for sine theta and cosine theta. And in fact, so sine theta and cosine theta will be other symbols. At this point, I'm probably doing more work to, to get sage math to do this than I should. Um, so so I by treating sine theta and cosine theta as a separate set of equations, uh, set, unknowns, I have introducing an additional unknown, so I should give it an additional equation that will constrain them. Sine theta squared plus cosine theta squared is equal to 1. Um, that will, I think, uh, give it enough structure to be able to do this algebraically. So equation 4 
and I'm having it solve for sine theta and cosine theta. And really all I need is sine theta. Once I have sine theta, then um, I can do arc sine in the um, in, in all, all from alpha to do it. And yeah, and this is, um, by the way, if you're doing this by hand, the uh, best way to do it would be to figure out the tangent theta, which actually I think I can. Uh, let me do it this way. So I'm going to do, does it have, so it has two set of equi uh, solutions. It, it's um, understandably because of this uh, squared thing. Um, and does it have only two? I thought it might have even more than two. Uh, so... I don't quite care, let's see, so this is going to be negative, negative. Yeah, let me find the, ver use the version where, actually it doesn't matter. So let me use the first element. So what I can do is I can have an expression sine theta over cosine theta, which will be tangent theta. And I can use a substitution syntax within here. Um, so substitute. Let's see, if I the solution, first element, will this work? Oh yeah, it works, okay, great, great, great. Um, so what it has done, you know, when I take the first element of the solution, it's uh, this uh, list of uh, equalities. And that's uh, this is actually one of the allowed syntax for substitution. Uh, provide a list that states all the equalities that gives uh, what it'll be substituting. So with that, it substitutes in um, these expressions for sine theta and cosine theta, and then it does this uh, division, which gives that answer. So I'm just going to use this answer to um, to uh, <laughs> use uh, all from alpha for the remainder. So I have this expression here. And I think Ulfram Alpha understands a little bit of uh, Ulfram language, which Mathematica uses. So let me see if uh, I can do that. So this is the algebraic expression. I'm going to substitute in a value for V0. Uh, that will be 95 kilometer per hour. And R is um, 318 meters. And um, G is 9.8 meter per second squared. Uh, uh, let's see if that works. Um, mixing Wolfram language with Wolfram Alpha, it, it tends to be hit or miss. This is a substitution syntax within Wolfram, uh, the mathematical language. And yeah, I didn't get that. Uh, uh, so let me see if I can do natural language. If V0 is equal to that, R is equal to that. And G is equal to that. If it doesn't get it, I'll just do substitution manually. Um, yeah, it didn't get it. All right, never mind. I'll just do this substitution manually. This is one of the reasons, unless I need to do unit conversion, I prefer uh, Sage Math because Sage Math can do um, substitution in a single command in without doing this a lot of manual work where there's room for mistakes, where I might have done something wrong. Uh, oops. Uh, that, I don't know. You might have done it correctly, but that... All right. 0 0.223. That's an uh, angle in radians. So uh, I'll, I'll just do conversion manually. 180 degrees divided by pi. I guess it doesn't understand what I mean by n. Okay, so this should be angle in degrees, 12.8 degrees. That feels pretty steep for a, a banking over a roadway, I think. Um, but 95 kilometers per hour is also pretty fast to speed. So, um, so yeah, that's uh, this question. Um, um, again, if you use a standard strategy, pretty straightforward. And if you are going to use the Sage Math, you do, um, so, you know, I think this is right on the borderline where it might actually be less work to just <laughs> you do it by hand. Um, but if you do use SageMath, the trick, I, uh, 
trig functions are the Achilles heel of um, the computer algebra system. So Mathematica does deal with it pretty well, but um, the Maxima, which is the symbolic algebra system that SageMath uses, doesn't deal with the trig simplification all that well. So um, you either provided a little bit of help um, giving it a trick relationships in an algebraic form or, you know, you do it by hand. Really, you should get algebra practice so that you can do these kind of things by hand.